Hey guys, what's up? John here from fly8mikealpha.com and today we're going to go ahead and take five minutes of our time to go ahead and take a closer look at angle of attack and relative wind on our airplanes. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So we'll go ahead and assume you know the basic definition of angle of attack and that you've already seen our other videos about angle of attack online in the Private Pilot Ground School at flyatmikealpha.com. If you haven't, that's no big deal. You can go ahead and sign up for free today on the website flyatmikealpha.com. And if you already have, then great, go ahead and keep watching. So what we're ultimately looking at today is the relationship between angle of attack and load factor, stick position and angle of attack, and speed and angle of attack, as well as bank angle. So all those things combined. How are we going to do that? Well, we got our big old black stick here representing the cord line of the wing, and then we got our little piece of yarn representing the relative wind. So as we can see here, we know that if we slow down the airplane, we're going to have to increase angle of attack to stay flying to develop more lift at that slower airspeed. And relative wind is going to increase at a greater angle, thus increase angle of attack. So really pay attention to the stick position here, right? So the stick is really what is controlling angle of attack or yoke. Don't pay attention so much to the nose or look at the nose, but watch how the angle of attack responds more so to the stick than the position of the nose of the aircraft. So as I pull back on the stick, we immediately increase angle of attack all the way up to pretty much a power on stall here. To reduce angle of attack and recover from that little bit of a stall, I relax the stick, I let it come forward, and that immediately lowers angle of attack. It lowers the nose too, but more importantly, it's lowering angle of attack, and as a result of lowering angle of attack, there's a loss of lift, and the nose lowers automatically. The nose is lowering not because we're pushing the stick forward, it's lowering because there's a loss of lift on the wing, and the nose is heavy because the CG is forward, and thus it makes the nose pitch forward. But the reduction in angle of attack is really coming from relaxing the stick. So what I'm driving home here is you control angle of attack via the yoke. So sometimes we like to say that when we make a 60 degree bank turn, we have two G's on the airplane. If the airplane has two G's on it, then our bodies have two G's on it too. If the airplane has a higher load factor, if we have to support twice as much weight, we probably need twice as much lift and we're either going to have to go faster, or typically what we do is we just roll into that turn, pull back on the stick to increase angle of attack, and increasing angle of attack gives us the extra lift necessary to keep the nose up there on the horizon and make a nice level turn here. But I want you to understand that you can bank the airplane to 60 degrees, and if you're not pulling back on the stick, angle of attack doesn't have to be high. So although this graph here shows, yes, 1G, 0 degrees bank angle, 60 degrees, 2Gs, and then if we go up to 70 degrees, we can see how it increases all the way to about 3Gs. If we go to 80 degrees, it goes all the way up to 6Gs, but that's only for level flight. You can go to a 90 degree bank and have zero G-forces on the airplane and fly the airplane at zero degrees angle of attack at any airspeed, because if you're at zero degrees angle of attack, it's impossible to stall, and it doesn't matter. So all that matters is how much you're pulling back on the stick and how much angle of attack you're inducing, how much drag you're inducing on the airplane with the stick or with the yoke, and whenever you get close to the critical angle of attack, whether your wings level or banked or whatever the state the airplane is in, simply relaxing that back pressure or pushing forward will lower the angle of attack. Yes, it also lowers the nose, and so we oftentimes say to recover from a stall, lower the nose. What you're ultimately doing is lowering angle of attack. Lowering the angle of attack decreases lift on the wing. The forward CG up in the nose pulls the nose down. But what ultimately broke the stall was just relaxing the back pressure, not having to shove the nose down or left or right or whatever direction it happened to be, okay? So you control angle of attack, you control the ability of the airplane to stall or fly all through the yoke and through the stick. So when you get into trouble, quit yanking back on it. Don't pull back so much. Or when you really want to increase angle of attack and increase drag on the airplane, that's a great time to pull back on it and bring on a whole bunch of drag, regardless of what bank angle or airspeed you're at, as long as you're within safe margins. Now to wrap up this video, what I really want you to think about here is compare your angle of attack and how close you are to getting to a stall, how close you are to the critical angle of attack, to how much load factor you feel in your seat, okay? So in the stick position as well. So the more back the yoke is, the more you're pulling the yoke back, the more you're pulling the stick back, the more load you feel in the seat, the more angle of attack you're calling on on that wing. So whether it's in a turn or a climb or you're doing a loop or whatever crazy maneuver you happen to be doing, really correlate stick position or yoke position along with how much weight you feel in your seat, how much you feel those G-forces pushing your butt into the seat to what your angle of attack is because angle of attack is what makes the airplane fly and angle of attack 
is what was going to make or break you when you're really maneuvering in the critical ranges. Obviously, a lot of airplanes have accidents because they stall, whether it's an approach to landing or departure or whatever it might be. If you can prevent the stall, you never have to worry about spins. And if you can manage your angle of attack and effectively know what your angle of attack is doing just by the weight you feel in your butt, just by that seat of the pants feel and the position of the yoke and the stick, then you can avoid the stall altogether. And it's a happy day for everyone. So hopefully that five minutes was useful for you, give you a better understanding, a good visual representation of angle of attack without you having to go out and bolt this big old pole onto your own airplane. You can see how it's working for us. Any questions on this, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Shoot us a question right through the ask a question button online at Fly mikealpha.com. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Share this on Facebook with your friends, on Twitter, on Instagram, all of that. Share it with your friends around the airport. Who knows, it may actually save somebody from getting into an accident one day, or at least alleviate some confusion for some new students out there trying to wrap their mind around this complicated topic of angle of attack. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and remember, if you can't fly every day, then fly 8mikealpha.com. We will see y'all next time.